Hey guys, just before my Ritalin kicks in where I feel like I need to start doing my work, I want to do a vlog and this vlog I want to talk about um, like dog hip dysplasia or when they have signs of weakness in the hind legs and trouble getting up. Um, this sometimes goes with very extreme weight loss and the coat also goes um, very... You know, it, the coat loses its shine, and you may notice like flaking of skin. But depending on what breed of dog you have, basically uh, the signs would be well, there's there's weakness in the hind legs. Uh, you may have read that certain breeds, if their pedigree, like German Shepherds, if they're Corgis or they're uh, Lab Labrador Retrievers, they have this tendency to have a syndrome called hip dysplasia. Where, which is some kind of an animal version of a slip disc or whatnot, you know, like some problem with the hip. Um, the reason why I want to talk about this is because a lot of um, a lot of places in Singapore would have this misdiagnosed, and the fact of the matter is that I ever had this misdiagnosed in my previous dog as well. Uh, what he had could have been acute renal failure. And, you know, basically where renal failure suddenly, you know, takes a turn for the worse, where his red blood cells um, drop, and then, you know, perhaps he has a high amount of creatinine in his body, and, you know, perhaps like the phosphates is out of balance, nitrogen is out of balance, you know, all this stuff. So, in Singapore, pet care, there is some kind of a scam going on and I, I believe it still goes on today because back then my dog went to famous places like uh, you know Mount Pleasant, St. James, Vet I mean these were the the famous ones but you know it, he was admitted and it was expensive it was um, about 60, 70, or even more than that, USD per day, uh, excluding other proceed. I mean, including some procedures and all that. So, it was. So that was. It was like a scam because, it could be that in Singapore, the pet care is not. Uh, I mean, because pet care is expensive, people don't usually, uh, choose to. To kind of care for the animals who have renal failure, even. Uh, you know, even when it's diagnosed, such that medical care practitioners for 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 animals they don't have experience in dealing with it. In Thailand, it's very very common. So, for me, I took my dog to the vet, uh, three days ago, and I mean he has been combating renal failure for the past three months, and basically I've been doing IV drips for him daily basis at home, uh, but suddenly you know. He just lost interest in his eating and he had trouble getting up. It was kind of like what my dog went through, my previous dog went through, and it was upsetting to watch. But I saw a glint of playfulness in his eyes despite the fact that he couldn't get up. And I was like, okay, you know, I think he still wants to fight. His time is not up yet. I remember in my previous case, uh, the doctors only recommended to just euthanize the dog. So I was like, what the hell? So... At the point of time, uh, that dog was only 11. So a lot of vets say, oh, well, that's a very long life. It's about time they went. And if you're going to go on like this, it's going to cost you a lot of money. Uh, the dog's not going to live a good life. Well, heck, if it was properly recognized as renal failure back then, then, you know, he could have had a few more years of life. Um, I mean, the, there, was, and there was weight loss. Why did they notice the weight loss? Why did they just why did they just only notice the fact that he, he had trouble getting up? So in this case, you know, my dog has weight loss, uh, trouble getting up, um, and we knew it from a few months ago because he went through he, they, they they tested him for various things and we found out that well it's the kidneys are not getting rid, rid of the waste well enough. So I highly implore you guys, if you have pets that are having symptoms and they can't get up, um, hind legs are weak. You may have read around, you thought it's hip dysplasia because it happens to be a pedigree breed. But um, it may not be the case. So I highly recommend that you take your 
pet, could be a cat even, for a blood test, and that can review if he has renal failure or not. Um, take a urine test. And I think they need to taste to test these two things because they need to measure like how much um, of the creatinine is able to get out of the body, and with that, you know, you can get your pet on the correct treatment. And it's interesting how with the right uh, treatment approach within a day two days they can get up and walk again so on the day that I brought my dog in he couldn't even lift his head I mean even that was a chore for him but but yesterday when I went to visit he was already being able to lift his head so that's a big difference and I'll be checking on him later I think he'll be able to get up and walk again so uh, I heard that pet care in, in Vietnam also sucks. If you happen to be in that country, well, you may want to... Uh, if they have issues in diagnosing this, just get them to test your dog for, like, uh, renal failure. If you live in a different country and you find that your dog has problems getting up, standing, and all that, if he hasn't already been diagnosed, highly recommend you check it out. It may not necessarily be something to do with the hip bones. Bye for now.